Hey everybody! It's me! I know, it's shocking, you're actually seeing me more often. What are you gonna do? Um, I figured since I look somewhat presentable today that after about eight weeks of not sharing this, I probably should. It's my labor and delivery story. I can't believe I haven't done it yet. But I'm trying to keep out of the sun. Ooh, oh, it's bright. Um, but I've just been so busy as you can imagine. So, I will get started. Um, the first thing I can tell you is that if you've watched my videos before, you would know that I would, I really wanted my four-year-old at the time, now five, um, to be at the birth of his baby brother. So I was really worried that he wasn't going to be there on that day because he does have a visitation. Um, so I was worried he wouldn't be there, but he was there. So this is awesome. Um, I did vlog a little bit before I went into the hospital and during the day, uh, when I was having slight contractions and had a little bit of, of show, but I wasn't really sure. Um, and Davina, my wonderful best friend, can attest to this, that I was texting her all the time. She stayed up with me the entire night. She lives in another state. Um, and we met online, and she is the world's best friend, and I just, I can't say enough about her. She stayed up the entire night with me, making sure that I was okay, and just keeping me calm, which was amazing. I can't thank her enough. Um, so, yeah, hi! <laughs> so, at around 9 o'clock at night, I started having these contractions that were about 10 minutes apart. Um, and I really wasn't sure, I still kind of denied them, just that they were kind of painful Braxton Hicks. They weren't really intense at all, but uh, they started getting a little bit stronger, and so Davina and I were timing them, and soon enough, all of a sudden, around 10 o'clock, or was it 11? I don't remember. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. Um, my contractions went from 10 to 5 minutes apart. So this is when I called the doctor at, I think, was it 11 or 12? One of the two. Um, at 12, called my doctor at 12 and said, I really need to come in, um, call the doctor's office. So they went to go call the doctor at the hospital. They never called me back. So half an hour later, all of a sudden my contractions had started becoming pretty painful and they had gone from five minutes apart to about two minutes to a minute apart. Scary. <laughs> so, um, finally I called the office back again, got the doctor to call me back and she didn't really even seem to believe me which was weird, um, but she said, okay, come in. So I went in, and instead of hooking me up right away and sending me to a room, they took me into an observation room to um, just check me out a little bit. So it was so lax. I couldn't believe it. I was in so much pain, um, and my contractions were one on top of the other, really bad. Um, they were very close together, and it seemed that the nurse really didn't care. So, finally the nurse came in, she hooked me up to the monitor, um, and then the doctor came in and she checked me, she said I was only two centimeters dilated, which didn't make any sense to me. So, she said she'd come back after she did a little bit of blood work. So she came back again, and she says, okay, well, I guess we'll submit to you. <laughs> really? You think? <laughs> so, um, they sent me into my hospital room, which is in this hospital, you labor, deliver, and recover in the same room, and you get your own private room, which is great. I'm really stuffy. Oh, hi. I'm talking about you. Yeah. He's mine. Um, so, I was sent into the room, they hooked me up, and I don't really think the doctor had looked at how my contractions were. She came in at about half an hour later. I was crying, not very happy. I handled the pain really well, considering how bad it was. Um, she came in and said, I'm really worried about you. Who says that to a, a pregnant girl? I don't know. Uh, she said, your contractions are literally overlapping each other. Um, she goes, and I'm worried that there is some internal bleeding in the sac and that we may have to give you a C-section. And that was my ultimate fear. Well not my ultimate fear, but you can imagine as a crunchy, earthy mom, the last thing I wanted to do was to have a C-section. I'm sure not no mothers out there want to be cut open. Um, so she said, we're going to monitor you some more, and we're going to hope for the best. So I tried relaxing, doing some breathing exercises, praying, um, still talking to Davina the whole time, and they came in and Apparently my contractions had calmed down and started spacing apart again. 
So, long story short, throughout the night, uh, Dakota fell asleep right after we got there. My mother fell asleep about 10 minutes after we got there. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> so I was there by myself, screaming in pain, trying to handle it. I wanted to do a natural birth, um, and I can tell you that I did end up with an epidural. Um, I applaud women out there that can do this without any pain medication. I really do. But those contractions, my doctor said, were incredible. Um, I wish I had the graphic chart on it to show you how they were. They were the most, it was like a constant contraction for at least a few hours. It was terrible. Um, so throughout the night, I tried to bear down and deal with it. I did everything I could. I just gripped my teeth and breathed and tried everything. And then finally around, I think, 7 o'clock, in the morning, the next day, I said, I can't, I can't do this anymore, or I think it was like 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, so it had been about 24 hours of labor, um, 12 hours of labor, and um, I said, I really, I can't do this anymore, so they said, well, we're switching shifts, so can you wait a few minutes, and then we'll send the anesthesiologist up, well, they didn't send him up for like two hours, thanks guys. Uh, they finally sent him up and they gave me this drink they said was supposed to um, neutralize the acids in my stomach to help me from not throwing up. I immediately threw up right after I had that drink. It's disgusting. Um, the guy who came in and did the epidural is the sweetest, nicest man I'd ever met. He is wonderful. And I, I told him, I said, you know, I wanted to do this naturally. And he says, yeah, good luck with that. Thanks. But he was really nice. Uh, so then, I guess our heart rates had dropped, both Colton and I's, so without even asking me, they gave me, I think what do they call it, epinephrine, or adrenaline, one of the two, whatever, it makes your heart rate speed up, um, and when they gave that to me without even asking, which I guess they really shouldn't ask if your heart rate's dropping, um, our heart rate shot up really high, and stayed high for a good couple of hours, or at least an hour, um, I had to be put on oxygen. I had to lay on my side. They were worried because his heart rate wasn't dropping. And this is what happens when, you know, you, you get a little bit of medical intervention, I guess. It was just, you have to deal with it. Um, so after a while, uh, our heart rates finally started to drop and things were good. And I didn't feel any pain. I could move my legs, which was great, uh, but definitely wasn't in pain. And then suddenly the pain started coming back again and coming back hard and I felt a lot of pressure and this was around two o'clock um, and I said I really really need to push this is this is time I know it is so the nurse came in and she says oh there's no way you're ready I go no 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 I'm ready um, oh hold on what time what is this oh crap I have one minute and 32 seconds this is gonna have to be a two minute um, or two separate vlog because this is a long story, because there's an important part I have to share with you guys. Um, see if I can fit this in in a minute. The doctor came in right after I got my epidural, a couple hours before Colton was born, and went to check where I was. Colton's head was way up inside. He couldn't even feel it. So he got an ultrasound machine, he checked. Colton had been transverse. Uh, he was so high up that he couldn't come down, and... He looked at my bladder. My bladder was literally about to burst. They had given me about three bags of saline, maybe four, but hadn't allowed me to go to the bathroom and had not given me a catheter. So that was dangerous. The nurse somehow forgot. I don't know what's going on. I know that's dangerous. The doctor looked at her like she had four eyes and like he was ready to kill her. <laughs> So I'm going to stop now and we're going to go on to video two. So click here and this is part two.